In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today we have two commemorated feasts in the Church, uh, the Feast of St. Peter in Chains, and the Feast of the Holy Maccabees uh, from the Old Testament. Uh, the Feast of St. Peter in Chains is a uh, commemoration in the Universal Church, but a, a third-class feast for the fraternity of St. Peter specifically. Uh, so going over these, you know, these two feasts actually um, combine very well together uh, to give us uh, two sides of the coin of how we are to respond in the face of um, tyranny and overreach from the secular sources, from the government or whatever it may be. Uh, the church is sovereign. The rights of God are first, uh, and then the rights of natural authority, the state, or whatever it may be. Uh, but of course, um, <laughs> universal desire of fallen humanity is to exert uh, man's rights over God, uh, man's desires, really, uh, over God. And so we see uh, how, how ought we to respond in the face of that. Uh, these two feasts today uh, give us the two responses. And so we will go through that. So St. Peter in Chains, uh, this is uh, recorded in Acts chapter 12, and it was after the uh, crucifixion, the resurrection of Christ, the Pentecost, the apostles are preaching. Uh, they've been interrogated, imprisoned, released, scourged, all this kinds of stuff. And uh, so this is a little later. Uh, in fact, this is it begins with St. James the Greater having returned from uh, Spain, having returned from Tarsus, uh, being killed and seeing that this pleased the Jews. Um, he um, uh, proceeded to imprison St. Peter also. And so St. Peter is in chains, and this is at the, during the feast of upcoming to the Passover, um, uh, the days of the Azimes. And um, Peter was kept in prison, and the prayer was made without ceasing by the church unto God for him. And, and the very next day, um, the, the day that Herod was planning on bringing Peter out and presenting him before the people and presumably sentencing him to death, Peter was miraculously delivered from prison. An angel of the Lord came and struck him in the side as he was sleeping and told him, put on thy sandals, gird thy loins, and follow me. And St. Peter uh, thinks, supposes it's a vision and follows the angel. You know, the chains fall off of his wrists and his feet. He follows the angel uh, through, the, um, uh, through the dungeon, past the guards, out the gate, along the street, and he presume, presumes he's seeing a vision, and the angel disappears. And then Peter comes to himself, and he says, Now I know in very deed that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all expectation of the people of the Jews. Uh, fantastic, completely unforeseen deliverance uh, from prison, from certain death, uh, miraculously, right? Completely at the hands of God and through prayer. And so this would be um, one of the ways in which we respond to um, tyranny by the state or persecution from the state is by prayer, is by long suffering. And, you know, when Peter was in prison, what was he doing? He was sleeping, right? He wasn't pacing back and forth, you know, nervously biting his fingernails, uh, anxious and worried, struggling against his chains. He, he, he was sleeping and the angel told him, put on your sandals, gird yourself up. Like, he was relaxed. <laughs> uh, and so that can be a certain... Um, attitude that we have to take. Sometimes there is just no other, nothing else we can do. Uh, and rather than be worried and anxious and, and uh, um, you know, fr frustrated, whatever it may be, uh, um, stressed out, relax, you know, take a nap, <laughs> pray to God and believe entirely that, that God's will is going to be done. Um, and St. Peter, for all he knew, he was going to follow St. James. St. James had just been killed. He just um, um, uh, had, his, had been beheaded. And so St. Peter, this is the night, the very next day, St. Peter must have been expecting to be executed. And what was he doing? You know, he, he, he was relaxed. He was prepared and ready to accept uh, the, the um, will of God, whatever that may be. And he even says that against all expectation, not only of Herod and not only of the Jews, but, but even of himself. Uh, so we need to be ready for that. We need to be, have that courage and be ready to die. God did not deliver James. He delivered St. Peter. And in fact, this is the first time, well, one of the many times um, St. Peter is in prison. He's imprisoned here in, in Jerusalem with, with King Herod, but his work wasn't finished yet. But later on, St. Peter would be imprisoned by Nero in Rome, 
And from that, he wouldn't be delivered. He would be killed, uh, crucified. So um, there is, as I said, that um, aspect of it, of, of, of relaxing, of accepting the will of God, uh, of just being at peace uh, and, and, and praying. Uh, you know, not resisting, not fighting, uh, but just accepting whatever may come. Although I would like to point out that perhaps um, uh, this has been said that St. Peter um, maybe was sleeping too soundly. Uh, perhaps a calling back to the Garden of Gethsemane when he slept during our Lord's Passion. And that's why the angel kicked him in the side. It says, uh, percusit in Latin, struck, uh, rather forceful. Uh, so perhaps you know, maybe maybe a little bit, but uh, he certainly was a change uh, from his usual temperament. St. Peter is impetuous, always opening his mouth to speak, always saying we should do this, we should do that, we should take action, drawing his sword. Um, finally, he's learned to calm his temper and accept the will of God. So, you know, a couple of uh, personal lessons for St. Peter there as well. Up the other side of the coin is the Maccabees, uh, in that we are not always to sit back and be at peace and only to pray, but sometimes zealous action, even military action, is appropriate. And this is uh, the, the, the um, a benefit, we could say, or the, the happy coincidence of having these two feasts on the same day, uh, the Maccabees and St. Peter in prison. Uh, for the Maccabees, is so named after um, uh, Mattathias Maccabees, the elder, and his sons Judas Maccabeus, uh, Simeon, and so on, who uh, during the um, uh, tyrannical reign of Antiochus appointed uh, uh, governor over Judea, not a Jew, um, but from a Roman, um, tried to um, stamp out the Jewish religion of uh, persecution. Uh, they had returned from the Babylonian captivity a few hundred years previous and were now undergoing uh, persecution by a foreign power. Uh, the the um, uh, Jewish religion, the Jewish customs were uh, being outlawed. Uh, people were being executed uh, for um, um, circumcising their children, which is the equivalent of baptism. Uh, so uh, definitely, uh, certainly a religious persecution. And what happens? Um, well, the people are praying, certainly. They're, they're beseeching God uh, for help. And help comes in the form of uh, Mattathias the Elder. Um, and he and his sons uh, refused to uh, um, abide by the government's demands to sacrifice the false gods. This comes from Maccabees chapter 2. And uh, this is 2 verse 16. And many of the people of Israel consented and came to them, but Matthias and his sons stood firm. And they that were sent from Antiochus answering said to Mattathias, Thou art a ruler and honorable, and a great man in the city, and adorned with sons and brethren. Therefore come thou first, and obey the king's command, as all nations have done, and the men of Judah, and they that remain in Jerusalem. And thou and thy sons shall be numbered in the, uh, among the king's friends, and enriched with gold and silver, and many presents. And then Mattathias answered and said with a loud voice, Although all nations obey king Antiochus, so as to depart every man from the service of the law, I and my sons and my brethren will obey the law of our fathers. God be merciful unto us. It is not profitable for us to forsake the law and the justices of God. We will not hearken to the words of King Antiochus, neither will we sacrifice and transgress the commandments of our law. Now, even as uh, the elder Ma uh, Maccabee was speaking, a certain Jew came up in the sight of all to sacrifice idols upon the altar. And Matthias saw it and was grieved, and his wrath was kindled. And he moved, and he showed zeal for the law, and slew the man at the altar. And turning, he slew also the officers who had come to compel them to sacrifice. And verse 27, Matthias cried out in the city with a loud voice, saying, Everyone that has zeal for the law and maintains a testament, let him follow me. So he and his sons fled into the mountains and left all that they had in the city. Well, so it is more than just prayer, more than just beseeching God uh, that is required uh, when it comes down to it, when we are faced with apostasy or adhering to the laws of God, uh, we have the right to uphold the laws of God, even to the point of lethal force, as shown by Mattathias. And, uh, you know, lest we think that, well, that was the Old Testament and this is, this is not, you know, the way it is now, now 
we should be pacifists, right? We should be like St. Peter now, right? Because this is the New Testament and not the Old Testament. Aha. Well, even in the Old Testament, uh, we are given an example of, we could say, pacifism, of that, that um, uh, putting everything solely on God. And uh, there was a contingent of Jews, about a thousand, who went and hid in the wilderness. And there was, um, uh, men came to, to wage battle against them on the Sabbath. And the men who were there, the Jews, said, we will not fight on the Sabbath. It is against the law. Uh, let us um, stay here as a testament that you are killing us unjustly. And they were all slain, a thousand of them. Then uh, Mattathias and Judas Maccabeus and the others um, were grieved and mourned for them and said, let us not do likewise, for if unless we resist, if, if even on the Sabbath, we will all be slain. So a pacifism itself is, is, is um, you know, it was a good example. It was, it was brave, it was bold, it was very, very um, uh, showed a great um, uh, trust in God. Uh, but resulted, you know, if everybody was like that, everybody would be slaughtered. There would be no one left. And we have the example of the Vendée in France uh, at the time of the, uh, the Napoleonic errors, um, the uh, French Revolution, and so on. Uh, we have the example of the Cristeros uh, very recently, uh, even just 100, just 100 years ago in Mexico, uh, who took up arms and fought against a tyrannical uh, government who, uh, you know, and this is not for their freedoms, right? This is not for their uh, American way of life, their Mexican way of life, their French way of life. It was for God. It was for religion. It was because peoples uh, could no longer give God the worship which was his due. They could no longer feed and take care of their souls with the sacraments of the church. Now they could not teach their children the, the ways of God. That is why we have to resist. Fear ye not they who can harm the body, uh, but those who can harm the soul. And, and this is always why Catholics will rise up in a, a military uh, um, uh, fashion, is to defend the weak, to defend uh, the widows, the orphans, the poor, uh, to defend the rights of God and the rights of people to be uh, to worship uh, the true God. And so, uh, sadly, it seems that those days may be coming even here to our country. Uh, it will not. It will. Um, it is only something which is uh, pursued after all other means have been exhausted. Uh, but as uh, self-defense is a natural law right, and the church has always upheld that, that you may use um, deadly force to defend oneself, you know, you don't wait until the, the burglar is breaking into your house to think, oh, I should go down to the store and buy a gun. It's, it's too late at that point. You have one already, hoping never to use it, but knowing how and being prepared. And, and that, is what, um, uh, that is what we as Catholics need to be able to do. And this is the case where simply owning a handgun is not going to be enough. Much, much more is required. There's coordination, there's cooperation, there's understanding each other, there's getting along with each other, there's forming friendships uh, um, uh, among parishes, between parishes, uh, being able to uh, put up a legitimate um, uh, capacity to resist. Uh, in, in, not that we would want to do that, uh, but having the capacity to do so, being able, uh, and, and that coordination, those logistics, that takes time. It's not something to do at the last minute. And I'd have to say, if anything, uh, well, you know, if I was going to have to describe the modern Catholic Church in, in these times, I would describe it as weak, flabby, um, uh, pathetic, um, effeminate, unready, uh, um, you know, or th that, that's, that's, that's following the example of bishops. <laughs> uh, or I could describe it as um, a restless, um, angry, um, frustrated, um, uh, eager, right, ready to do something. Uh, well, those times are coming. And so I would say if you know anybody uh, in your parish who is of like mind, get together with them. Like I said, start forming those friendships, those alliances, um, that build that network. And uh, when the time comes, we'll be that much more ready uh, to be able to hopefully put up a front which is organized enough that there's not even any attempt. It's like, okay, nope, they're too organized. We can't, we can't, we can't do this. And they back down. That is why we do it. Uh, so let us pray uh, to God for the, um, the strength, the wisdom, the prudence to know uh, what to do. do. Are these the times to be like St. Peter, where we just sit in our chains and pray, and then God miraculously delivers us against all expectations? Or is this the time of the Maccabees, where we have to rise up and fight manfully and, and win many battles, which the Maccabees did. After three years, uh, they liberated their country, um, which, which lasted for 100 years until uh, the Romans in the 63 a uh, B.C., uh, once again, took over. But, um, 
So that's it. Um, let us be prepared for either possibility, uh, but it's only going to come with deep interior prayer. Pray first, act later. Uh, let us pray for that, uh, that, that grace and that courage. St. Peter, pray for us. Holy Maccabees, pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.